Hey guys! So, in this video we are going to answer a great subscriber request or question which was, Frederick, can you share some thoughts about working in a really large PHP application or enterprise project level in PHP? So let's get into it. Now, I'm gonna tell you here and now that there is actually not that many that I know of at least who have worked in a really, really... Now, I'm not talking about like mid-sized company. We're ta I'm talking major-sized company where that uses PHP. Like Facebook, for example, used to use PHP. And at Ticketmaster, where I used to work, which uh, for, th for those of you who don't know that company, it's Live Nation, like their ticketing system that is, is one of the biggest in the world, if not the... I don't know that, actually. Don't quote me on that. But that the, the back end is done in PHP, or it's made using PHP, and a few Java services, of course. Java is always in the, like, you always have something in Java at a really large scale. There's always something. And the learnings that I got from working in that environment with PHP, now that was not my primary focus, but I'd, I was involved enough to know how that kind of felt. And the first and foremost thing I can tell you as a tip, if, you, if, you, if you're gonna work at, in PHP at that sort of scale, use PHP Storm. For the love of God, use PHP Storm or any equivalent, because you're gonna need some help. You are gonna need an IDE. Don't try, like I, oh. I remember trying my best, like I, I finally just gave up. I was, because I'm a Visual Studio guy. Like at the time I was working primarily on the front end and working with JavaScript and stuff like that. And Visual Studio Code is like the best thing there is, at least in my opinion, when it comes to doing like JavaScript, TypeScript, HTML, CSS, and most, like almost all of that stuff. But when it comes to a, like when you have such a massive code base, and it's all in PHP, you really need something to help you with a few key things. And the key things that you need to be aware of when you work with really large scale PHP is number one, you are going to change code very, very often. And in a loosely typed programming language like PHP, or in this case, a scripting language, that is very tricky to do unless you know where all the references are. Now you know, you know that I've been saying that at really large scale application development, types become so important. I know that I sound like a bro broken record, but it is true, guys. It's the main reason why I've actually started migrating over. I've, I've, I merged that branch not just, I think, this Monday. I merged the branch to my company, so officially now we have TypeScript support. And we're migrating over to TypeScript, because even at our scale, typing becomes a useful thing. And in such a massive PHP code base, it becomes the best thing ever. The best thing. And using something like PHP Storm is gonna help you a lot. Because uh, frankly, you change code so often and in a scripting language, that's really scary. Because even if you test run the application, you don't really know if it's working. You could have broken something. So that's number one. Number two is to write a buttload of unit tests. Like I would say that with a type system, unit testing is important. With a scripting language, it's ten, it's ten times as important. Because you don't, like, it's so easy for you to break something. You don't know. Without unit testing, or rather with unit testing, like I would even go as far as to say that writing unit tests in such a, like in a really, really large PHP code base, is almost a must. Because as I said, you could break something and you wouldn't know by just starting the application. There's no compilations, so you don't know. That's, uh, that's not great. Third thing is to use proper object-oriented practices, like doing OOP in PHP is, PHP is pretty nice. And you should, you should absolutely do that. The old paradigm, which was like the way that we used to do things in PHP, like before, our, before we had support for it, I don't do that. Just do use proper, proper object-oriented practices. It has support for it. You should be using. It's the same thing with MVC and stuff of this nature. Use these best practices because you need a structured way of working at that scale. 
that is a must. It's uh, it's not going to be maintainable if everybody just kind of hacks together their own. Like, I mean, the way that PHP used to work, where you just have a, you know, you have a hyper page, you go to it and you show some HTML and all that stuff, that's not going to work at that scale. You're going to need a routing system. Now, we didn't have something like Laravel or Cake or any of those, or the, those sort of sorts of frameworks. We're, using Symfony for the pack, we had Symfony for package management and we also used, I think we used one of, uh, I think we simply used the routing part, which was fine for our needs because the rest of the application was that custom. So we didn't need like an entire framework on top of that. I mean, it wasn't even feasible because the code base had already been written in the, you know, the old way of working in PHP that came around before object-oriented programming, or rather, before it came to PHP. So, using a routing system is critical, I would say, as well. And apart from that, what did I say? Use PHP Storm so that you have an ID or something like that. You don't have to just have specifically PHP Storm, but something of that nature, because it's going to be very, very helpful. Use a lot of unit testing because you're going to need it. You can break anything and uh, like you, you could break something and you have absolutely no idea of knowing. So it's very useful. It's, or rather, it's, I would say, critical at that scale without a typing system. And thirdly, use a routing system of some sort. So my personal favorite, like we like use like Composer is probably, you know, you, if you use PHP, PHP, if you're familiar with it, you should know about Composer. And then like just pull down Symfony and have a look at their packages. They were really great. The routing was, was pretty nice. And yeah, that's, that's it. And I'll give you an optional one that I found to be very useful when it's at really large scale. I, uh, and I, I, this is not specific to PHP in any way, but I think it's, it has to be said. And that is to use something like behavioral driven development. I've never worked on a project that I, where I thought this was as useful as, I, as when I was a Ticketmaster. Because the product is absolutely massive. It's, you have no, it's really big. And there's so many configurations and settings and different things that could change or be like you your the application will behave very differently depending on what configuration you have set up and there's so many of them so being able to and especially in a loosely typed language where you don't really know if you broke something i mean if you usually you know you you have an idea of it but you could just make a mistake so having an, a suite of automated tests that just runs through the whole application and clicks on everything and like interacts with it like a user would is extremely powerful so the thing I want to take you want you to take away from this is working at large scale in a loosely typed language is not the best. It, it's a lot. You have to be very careful in compare like more. I, I'm just going to say more careful. And in my personal opinion, you have to write even more unit tests. And hopefully you're, you're going to use something like Gherkin or something of that nature in order to to kind of put a layer on top of that. So testing is very important. Yeah. That's basically it. Have a great day.